Lord, we praise you for our first apostolic conferences to be held here in USA and Canada starting next week. We seek your face in prayer, Abba, to know your heart for the nations and to be your hands for your glory. Apostle Joshua Selman teaches us that the prefix re, R-E, means again, and the word again sparks hope, revival, life again. Well, Nehemiah chapter 4 refers to rebuilding. Father, we ask that you help us to use this time wisely to rebuild mindsets, rebuild heart sets, rebuild your temple, now the church, your bride, and a building up of your temple within us individually, corporately, territorially. Lord, build your temple of revival to be a house of worship, a house of prayer, a house of prosperity all the riches and glory in and through your precious son, Christ Jesus, every godly inheritance to be received and to be revealed as the gospel, your good news, so that when people see us at work, in our homes, driving cars, they see Jesus, the Christ. Repair, rebuild every breach and deficiency to keep wrong things out and good things in, to establish a system to replenish that fresh oil and to flourish from it. Replenish and flourish us, Father. Nehemiah chapter 4, verses 1 through 3, the enemy ridicules and taunts. They say, can they bring stones back to life? Well, guess what? We are the living stones. And by the same power that raised Jesus Christ from the dead, Romans 8, 11, we will be those living stones of testimony. The word Gilead means a heap of stone. May you turn our heap of lifeless dead stones into a heap of beautiful testimonies. May those heaps of prayer requests become living stones because we are those living stones as we are your living epistles, Father. Thank you all for your glory. They also say, the West is too far gone, but what they say holds no weight to what the Kings of the most high say, because what we say, speak and declare is the heart of the program of God. He fuels us with the strength to say what shall come to pass as his name Yahweh means come to pass and our prayers, our words, our lives, our destiny stand on his name, as well as to do the kingdom work for its manifestation. Verse six. So we rebuilt the wall. Lion of Judah, arise. Lion of Judah, arise for us. They may try us as men, but they cannot try the God for us and in us. Yahweh Sabaoth, a consuming fire. But may we first recognize that as the family, the children of God on a whole, that victory does not just happen. We need to pray. Why watch a soccer match? If there wasn't a process to that victory, the plays have already been laid out. Yes, but you require us to choose you first as our head coach to know your plan for victory through our coach, Apostle Selman, who is qualified, sent of higher grace and anointing and designated to spearhead our winning unto the visualized manifested victory for all to see foes, enemies, sideliners, and even ourselves to see your glory. May we be amazed at the result of the harvest coming. May we be amazed at your move on our heart for transformation, the beauty of all the salvations, the manifestation of empowerment, unity and love, purpose recognized, a lasting peace and fulfillment. But this can only come to pass by our prayers, by our prayers prayers. So after they plotted in verse eight, then came verse nine, but we prayed, but we prayed and posted a guard day and night. Prayer acts as a guard, but it also opens us up to your voice, father, your leading, your direction, your ultimate protection. We pray and then we act in obedience, which essentially is faith. Lord, avert the plots and plans of the enemy as we obey your voice to sacrifice and to continue. So what is the result of our prayers mixed with faith? Ha! God frustrated the plots of the enemy. Hallelujah. Verse 14. Remember the Lord who is great and awesome and fight for your brothers. Fight for your sons, daughters, wives, and homes. America is our home. Canada is our home. UK, Nigeria is our home. Don't leave it up to chance for things to be corrected. The devil's nickname is chance. Fight. Fight with our prayers, with the strength of hope that God has given us by his mandate of revival. 
hope again for new life in our school systems, new life in our culture, the seven mountains of culture. We fight not in our strength or our own name, no, not in pride, but in humility and repentance and reliance by remembering the Lord. We fight with boldness and no fear because we're on the side of the winning one, the ancient one, the one who is the creator of the universe, our head coach in destiny. Verse 18, the man who sounded the trumpet stayed with me. Thank you, Father, for your vessel, Pastor Nathaniel Basie, who stays with the vision, supporting, serving your program with his given grace. Keep him, stay with him, stay with his family and ministry. Use him and Pastor William McDowell to mightily come in a way that eyes have never seen, that ears have not yet heard. Hallelujah to your glory and your majesty over this nation. Verse 20, whenever you hear the trumpet, join us there. Ring your trumpet loud and true now, Father, drawing all men to you, drawing men to your presence and ultimately into your bosom, wherever we may be, Texas, outside of Texas, USA, Canada, Nigeria, around the world, our heart resonates to the sound of your heartbeat for revival here and now. Then it says, our God will fight for us. As we've completed our assignment, our own responsibility, there are places that our hands still cannot reach. But guess what? The hand of the Almighty does. And as we remain cognizant and we are or remain in consciousness as children of the Most High, He then reveals Himself as man of war. So we've completed our assignment because we know by your voice, we know your voice, we know your character, we know and trust your heart. We decree and declare that this will be the beautiful culmination of both the USA and Canada conferences before returning to Nigeria. On the strength of God's word and obedience to Christ, by the mercies of God, our God will fight for us so that, verse 21, we can continue the work. It says, so we can continue the work on the strength of whom we serve. We are empowered to keep going, to continue until his work is finished through us. Hallelujah. From first light of dawn till the stars come out. This is the first apostolic conference in USA and Canada, but we don't stop until the second of God's two great lights appears. First Adam, second Adam, the glorious return of Yeshua. God made two great lights by his created elements, always to our advantage and never to our harm nor confusion. We speak life. We speak synergy. We speak energy. We speak excellence and order into these conferences. And just as those lights are posted in the sky of vastness immeasurable to us, yet meticulously created, then organized and carefully placed and set into orbit, just as we are wonderfully fearfully, carefully made and set into this universe, this massive, immeasurable to us plan of the great architect of all things good and all things of magnificent glory. As we too remain in your and our posted places and our roles to reveal the unique dimension of your light, Lord, individually and as a body of stars, may the body of lights reflect the one true light the greatest light, the light of dawn. It's a new dawn here in this latter half of the year, July, 2024. The sun is setting. It's a new dawn. It's a new season. It's a new sound of fresh wind to make sound requires breath. Breathe into us, Holy Spirit, from the prophecy of your assigned life-giving spirits here at this conference so that we may all live and we may all stand. A new sound from the heavens to revive this army on earth. In the name of Jesus Christ, in the office of Jesus Christ, in the name of the one who is authority and has conferred it upon us now and forever. Amen, amen, amen.